on Fixing the Money Thing. Hi, Gary Cassie here in Sitka, Alaska. We are having a great time catching salmon. It's been an awesome day. I want to take a few minutes to help you win your battle, your Fixing the Money Thing. Principles in the kingdom illustrate the laws of the kingdom that will help you know exactly what to do. I get emails all the time from people that ask questions about their finances. And let's take a look at the Bible and let's really dig in to find out what you need to do. I'm reminded of a story in Luke chapter 5, since it's a story about fishing and we're here in Alaska fishing, that we can talk about. In Luke chapter 5, fishermen, professional fishermen, fish all night and catch nothing. That would be pretty discouraging. And I know many people get discouraged when their life doesn't change financially. But it says in verse number two of chapter five, Jesus walked along the shore, saw the fishermen, and they were washing their nets. I want you to remind, I want you to remember that, washing their nets, make a mark in your Bible or make a note. They were washing their nets. Jesus got into Peter's boat, asked him to put out a little from shore. He sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he'd finished speaking, he said to Peter, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. That's the earth curse system. The earth curse system of sweating, toil, painful toil and sweat. They worked hard, they put the labor in, but they hadn't caught anything. And maybe you're like that today. Maybe you're working really hard. Maybe you're just maxed out, but you just can't seem to get ahead. Well, hang on, the story gets better. So when they had done this, the Bible says they caught such a great quantity of fish that the nets about broke and the boats about sank. Now there's several lessons of kingdom law in this story. Number one, I wanna ask you a question. I asked you to underline or point out a part of this story in verse number two. What were they doing when Jesus found them? They what? That's right, they were washing their nets. Now secondly, they fished all night and caught nothing, but Jesus, after borrowing the boat, the boat came under the jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. Then Jesus receives a word of knowledge from the Spirit of God of where the fish are. They're there in the deep water. Now, Jesus gave Peter the location of exactly where the fish were. I have a question for you. No matter how great God is or how well he defines your future and your harvest, what would have happened if they were not washing their nets. Now, in case you don't know this, if the nets had not been washed, salt water rots the nets. They would have had the fish there. God would have done his part. But you know what would have happened? The Bible says the nets almost broke and the boats almost sank. What would have happened if they were in the habit of not taking care of the natural things? I'll tell you what would have happened. They would have had the fish. They would have began to pull them in and the nets would have broken and they would have lost the harvest. Friend, this happens all the time. And people don't realize that to understand harvest season in their lives requires both spiritual law and earthly law. You must take care of the natural as well as understand the spiritual. You need to understand a lot of things to be successful in life, taxes, how to handle your your inventory, how to run your business to be successful. I always say this, God can bring the fish, but you have to catch them. You know, it's interesting, I get emails from people that ask me, Gary, I'm not prospering. And you know what, I read the email and I can't even read it. I mean, there are probably misspelled words upon misspelled words. And my thir first thought is, I can see why you're not prospering. You need to learn how to write. You need to learn how to communicate. All business, all marketing, to be successful in life requires the ability to communicate effectively and accurately. You know, but it could go all kinds of directions. You can apply this to your business. I remember one time, of course I'm in financial services, I had a client that had a large sum to invest. In fact, one of the largest sums I'd ever had the opportunity to invest. Now I had sowed a seed for this client, not for this particular client, but I had sowed a seed. Drenda and I had been in agreement for a certain amount of business, a certain amount of income to come in in this period of time that we are working towards a goal. And when this 
this particular client showed up, I knew exactly this was my client. This is my fish. It was going to produce tens of thousands of dollars worth of business to our company. And I, I, I knew this is it. This is, this is what we believe for. As I was sitting with this client, we'd gone through a lot of different things and uh, he began to ask questions. As he began to ask questions, very quickly, I had some questions I couldn't answer. And I stumbled. I, I didn't lie to the client. I said, I'll need to get back to you on that. I'm not sure of the answer. Well, you know, people read you for what you're worth. And what I mean by that is when he had a large sum of money, he wanted to invest with someone that understood the legal side of the business, that he could trust. What he saw in me was someone that maybe wasn't quite up to pace with the need that he had. Now, this happened many years ago. Of course, I've hoped I've got, gotten better by then. But, you know, it's not wrong not to know anything, but you need to do your part. I should have prepared much greater before I met that client. I knew the client was coming. I'd received questions, you know, correspondence from him through uh, social media, email, that he was interested in what we were doing. I, I knew it was a large sum of money. I knew his age bracket. I knew what he would be doing. I understood retirement. I should have done a better job in finding all the answers I could have figured he would have asked. That fish was there. The fish, the client, the money, what I was bleeding for was right there. I just couldn't finish the deal. So today, as we're talking here on fixing the money thing, I want you to stop and think, am I prepared to do my part to catch the harvest if it came along? You know, the Bible's so great. It talks about so many practical things. It says, if a man is not trustworthy with a small amount, he will not be trustworthy with a large amount. You know, many times people think, well, this small thing isn't going to make a difference. I mean, someday when I get the big thing, I'll be more diligent. Guess what? That doesn't happen. You need to practice right now as if you're already in the big leagues. You need to be effective and to be on your game right now when there's not much happening so that God can bring the people to you and the business to you. Because remember, his name is at stake as well. You represent him and he's not going to come and fill your boat that everyone watches your net break and your boat sink and be an embarrassment to God's kingdom. And all along you've been prophesying and telling people how great it's going to be when God shows up with your harvest. No, you always prepare first. There is no lost time in preparation. In fact, preparation may take a long time. Jesus was in ministry at age 30. He practiced and learned to age 30 for three years of ministry. You know, preparation is a key to your, to your harvest and a key to catching the fish that God brings. When we come back, we'll talk more about things you need to do in the natural to prepare yourself for the big fish that God wants to bring. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.